heuristic is any approach to problem solving, learning, or discovery that employs a practical method, not guaranteed to be optimal, perfect, logical, or rational, but instead sufficient for reaching an immediate goal, such as deciding where and how you should adjust a patient. Where finding an optimal solution is impossible or impractical, heuristic methods can be used to speed up the process of finding a satisfactory solution. Heuristics can be mental shortcuts that ease the cognitive load of making a decision. Examples that employ heuristics include using a rule of thumb, an educated guess, an intuitive judgment, a guesstimate, stereotyping, profiling, or common sense. When it comes to healthcare or chiropractic methods, heuristic processes come into play when deciding on a diagnosis or deciding where and how to adjust a vertebra or motion segment or a subluxated talus. Should one employ a multi-parameter examination of the spine? From a face validity standpoint, the answer would be yes. In the Gonstead system, the analysis procedures include ones that are generally taught at chiropractic college such as a history and review of systems, general physical examination, which may include specific orthopedic and neurological tests, and visualization or inspection, static palpation for edema, tenderness, and red response, skin temperature instrumentation, motion palpation, static and stress x-ray and or advanced imaging such as MRI. What are the processes that are used to execute a multi-parameter examination? In what context? In which patient? At which motion segment? At what age? For a new patient or as a follow-up? With which comorbidities? How do I address the health needs of the patient? How do I change behavior in a patient? What are the elements of the history that are meaningful to me and which are meaningful to the patient? Have I identified a cause or the many causes? Is it helpful to do so, partially helpful or useless? Are my findings and my thinking or weighing about the findings I discover on a binary or yes-no scale? Is it mild, moderate, or severe? Is it zero to 10? Good chiropractors, like all good doctors, learn to use pattern recognition when diagnosing the patient. Which patterns and which processes to detect the patterns are useful and practical and get you to a decision in which you can inform upon and take action. A heuristic technique is to decide the basic rules of thumb and a more likely than not type of probability that helps you to resolve the various findings from a multi-parameter examination, such as PARTS, or SHARP, S-H-A-R-P, the signs of inflammation, which then leads to an adjustment decision. A subluxation is a partial dislocation, or a sprain. When assessing the spinal column, a mechanical process can be used to determine which vertebrae are potential sites of subluxation, versus those related to compensation or are normal. The AP radiograph can be used in this way. Here's an example of an unlevel vertebra above a level vertebra. This may be considered a potential subluxation. Unfortunately, levelness is more the exception rather than the rule when it comes to sacral base symmetry or femur head heights, making the wedge analysis susceptible to misinterpretation in some patients. One such anomaly has been termed unilateral sacral inferiority by Dr. Fred Barge, and it represents malformation of a sacral segment such as S1 into a hemivertebra. In a PubMed search, you will need the keywords sacral obliquity and sacral slanting. A great analysis of this subject is the PhD thesis of Dr. John Dolhunty. The anomaly is commonly associated with a lumbar scoliosis. A Ferguson projection can be used to assess more precisely the presence of sacral plateau anomalies. It can be done with an upper two tilt along the sacral base angle. Here is a case of L5-S1 wedging from the AP view. And here's the same patient in a Ferguson projection. 
This Ferguson was done P to A with a 38 degree tube tilt down at an FFD of 80 inches. It shows that there is no deformity of the L5 motion segment, nor is there much wedging of the L5-S1 disc. Instead, it appears it is largely sacral obliquity that is producing the wedging appearance on the AP full spine. This case involves a type 4 sacral obliquity per dohunty. Because the AP x-ray shows a sacral slanting to the left and the femur head height was 12 millimeters low on the right, this appeared to be a clear case of sacral obliquity and therefore no Ferguson projection was needed to draw that inference. Note that there are no level vertebrae. The T8 vertebra is laterally flexing with respect to T9, and T9 has not yet reached true horizontal. This can be called an overcompensation and is a refinement of the level foundation principle. The same pattern appears to occur at the T2-T3 motion segment. The T8-T9 and T2-T3 motion segments are listed because the clinical examination showed a temperature differential, edema, and tenderness at those levels. If the findings were dispersed over multiple segments or a more accurate analysis of joint motion was needed, then lateral bending x-rays can be used to identify fixation dysfunction and compensatory hypermobilities. The listing of L5 was P. The lateral x-ray shows a slight retrolisthesis or posterior vertebra. The L5-S1 motion segment had palpatory signs of sprain, including edema and tenderness. There was also a temperature differential at L5. The cervical spine shows signs of mid-cervical degenerative joint disease or osteoarthritis and hyperextension of the C6-7 motion segment. The convexity is to the left and the patient was placed in right side posture with the convexity or high side of the rainbow placed up. This is the preferred choice, especially if there is a convexity at the L4 disc space to the left side. This position will tend to stress the lumbar spine into a more neutral position. 